Today we're out here on the trails and we're going to talk to you about suspension lockout. We're going to tell you exactly what it is, how it works and when you should be using it. Most suspension forks have externally adjustable damping options and the common ones are compression and rebound. Rebound is usually found at the bottom of the fork, just down here, and compression is found at the top of the fork. This particular model of fork is a RockShox Lyric and it's got a very simple single dial on the top just to close the low speed compression damping or fully open it. So low speed compression damping is the sort of damping that you want to stop the fork moving to your movements and also to help keep the fork extended, like keep it up a bit when you're riding through turns and stuff like that. So quite often you hear this referred to as lockout if you run this fully closed. So it makes the fork feel a bit more firm. So if you're climbing up a hill, for example, out the saddle, it'll stop it bouncing around too much. Just controls the stroke, firms it right up. Again, if you open it, it becomes a lot more plush straight away. The same thing applies to shocks and there's different settings on the shocks. So the same adjustments can be found on a lot of rear shocks. So on this one, I've got rebound adjustment, which is this clicky dial here. Again, that's to control the extension of the shock. But for compression, it's got a three stage lever here. And it's kind of indexed like your gears are, so you can easily find those indented positions. So there's fully open, there's midway, and then there's closed. So open, you want to use that when you're just riding sort of rooty, rough trails where you just want the suspension to give you the maximum control and grip out there. The mid setting becomes really useful for climbing where you just want to keep the bike sitting up slightly so you're not going to strike your feet as often but still allows a lot of traction to the back wheel. Fully closed or locked out is the sort of setting you want if you're riding perhaps on the road or on a fire road. The perfect sort of thing for an enduro event climb. Okay, so a rooty climb like this is the perfect sort of way to demonstrate how effective a lockout can be. Now, I don't want to lock out the suspension fully because it's quite rooty and I want the maximum traction I can get. If I run it fully open, it's going to give me that traction, but as the suspension is actuating, my feet are going to be really close to striking these roots, so I need to get the best of both worlds, and that is that mid setting, and it works really well for this sort of occasion. So, engage in mid mode. Make sure I'm in a nice low gear and then hopefully I can get up this without any sort of strikes. So as you can see here, look how close my pedal is to this route. You imagine with my body weight on this bike and the sort of sagging motion that you get when you're actually really digging in on a climb, you're going to strike that. So running it in the mid setting is really, really helpful for this just to keep the bike a little bit higher but I'm still getting suspension use, so still getting the most of the traction to the back wheel. So this is my Newt Proof Mega, and I've got lockout options on the front and rear, but do I use them? Well, actually, yes and no, which I'll go into now. So this is an enduro bike. It's 165 millimeters travel. To me, it feels like a mini downhill bike. So I do take it on those sorts of rides where there may be one big climb, and then I'll ride a pretty much downhill track and then do that big climb back. It's by no means a cross country ride where I maybe would use a lockout on and off quite a lot with this. It's either one or the other. So I open it up for the downhills and then I close it for that big climb back to the top. It's also a reason why I don't feel I actually need a remote lever for, for this lockout on my handlebars because I'm not using it that much. Like I said, it's on or off. I've got a two stage one, it's either open or firm. As Dolly's explained, when I put it to firm for pedaling, it just firms everything up, makes that bike more efficient. But something that I also like is it keeps me in that nicer position when I'm climbing. So I'm not sagged in. I'm still sat up on the bike in that good position. However, I do also have lockout options on my fork. This is a Fox 36 with, a, with that Fit4 damper. I've got open, mid, and then close. And that close is fully locked out. But I don't use that, to be honest. Again, this is an enduro bike. I feel like that is enough for me, just locking the shock, helps me climb that little bit better. And I don't mind leaving it in that open setting all the time on the fork. So it just sags in that little bit. And again, keeps me in that good position for climbing. Right, when it comes to my Scott Genius 700 tune, this has a remote lockout system right up top here, which actuates both shock front and rear. So it starts out, it's 150 mil of travel, but then you click it like this, and it goes down to 110, but this is a clever little system. Scott called this traction control, and it's a pretty unique little system because that adjusts the dampening in there to give you a little bit more traction out there on those technical climbs. And then with one more click, that is fully locked out, and that's great for those flat surfaces, aka fire roads, long tar roads, 
anything with no bumps at all. It kind of locks it up so you can get as much power down to those wheels as possible. So Neil and Dottie are using their lockouts and it's perfect for them for climbing. For me, this is a little bit different. I like to use it when it comes to jumping. I tend to flick it straight to 110 and that kind of stiffens it all up to give me a little bit more pop on the jumps because I don't really want to run it at 150 on these little steep jumps where I kind of sags in. So for me, I really do like having a lockout. It makes the bike so versatile. You can have actually a pretty long travel bike and turn it into an almost a rigid bike and it does make a big difference for climbing. Yeah, just a flick of a switch or a turn of a dial can really change the ride characteristics of your bike. If you want to see some more videos, click over here for a tech from the EWS where the mechanics talk about how they set up the bikes. Yeah, and if you want to find out about how to tune the air spring on your bike, click down here. Click on the logo to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up.